Uh, we're going to talk about uh, how we set a cross-cut handsaw. It's the same way we set a cross uh, a rip-cut handsaw. We press the teeth for one from one side and then one from the other so that the teeth are something like this. Um, they're bent one way, then alternately the other, all the way down the length of the saw. And this is what we call kerf. This is where we create a slightly wider um, entrance into the wood than the plate of the saw itself, which is very important because if you don't have set, then the saw doesn't cut into the wood. It gets bound up as you progress your cut with each stroke. So I wanted, first of all, to talk about the contrast between a rip cut and a cross cut saw. I've got two saws here. This one's a rip cut, this one's a cross cut. What's the difference? Well, when you buy a saw, say, on eBay or buy even a saw from a store, it usually will not say cross-cut saw or rip-cut saw anymore. That was how we sold all saws at one time. Uh, but today, that's all changed. Now we have a universal cut. We have these, but they're not really universal, re universal in the sense that they're designed to, uh, to rip-cut. Most of them are used for cross-cut. But we are defining our saws by a rip cut or cross cut because for fine work we need to have saws that will do the, the task. So we're going to talk a little bit. This is a rip cut tooth pattern and I'm hoping that we can show exactly what we mean by a rip cut pattern. It's got uh, to, it's to do with the angles of the teeth but what a rip cut pattern is is that these are like chisels going across the surface of the wood. So when we have a a rip cut pattern, this is representing the strands of the wood, the saw goes into the wood this way and it rips down in between the fibres and it severs the fibres this way. We can't really cross cut so easily, especially when the saw gets big, we can't cross cut quite so easily with a rip cut saw. That said, I sharpen all of my tenon saws for a rip cut pattern because the teeth are so small they're more commensurate with the size of the fibers that I'm cutting. So my, con my <coughs> mark uh, of reference would be somewhere around an eight point saw. If it was eight points or less, eight, six, four, I would sharpen those specifically for either a rip cut or a cross cut pattern. I'll show you that in a second. On my smaller saws, I can rip and cross cut with the same tooth pattern, so I sharpen for a rip. When I'm making dovetails, most of the work is a rip cut um, that I use. So tenons, most of it's a rip cut. So let's take a look at this one here. I've, I've made a, a, a cross cut pattern to try to show you what the contrast is um, on the tooth pattern itself. You can see, I think, this has a bevel on it this side. You should be able to see that from your side, a black line. And then I go to the other side and it's got a black line on this side. Every other tooth has this pattern and it's this that defines which way you bend the tooth. This has a bevel here, has a bevel here, has a bevel here and a bevel here. So this means that this tooth has to be bent in this direction towards me, this one towards me. That means that this one is now going in this direction and this one is going in this direction. And that is absolutely definitive because that then pushes this very tight, this pinnacle point is pushed to the outside of the saw plate. This one is pushed to the outside, this one this way and this one this way. By that alternating pattern, it means that we create uh, a saw that's capably cross cutting the fibers of the wood and it's just glancing the tops of the teeth with this very sharp pinnacle point and it severs the fibers and that parts one side of the wood to the other. Very different than with a rip cut saw. So now we want to see which um, saw teeth we set. So I'm going to show you that by coming in closely on the, rip on the cross cut pattern saw to show you exactly how we press these teeth to get them staggered in the way I just described and that will give you the cross cut um, saw set. It's very simple, we take a saw set like this, put it onto the teeth, and we determine which teeth we have to bend. I'll show you how to do that now. We're going to set a cross cut saw, and there are a few details that we need to look at when we set the saw into the vise. You can hold it freehand, of course. Um, you don't have to use a vise, but when we set the saw to task, we uh, the saw set to task, 
we're looking at the teeth and what I want to see is that on the, on this, in this case the first tooth has a bevel on both sides so I know that when I place the saw set to the tooth I'm pushing that tooth away from me so the plunger comes out it hits the the disc now you can see numbers on the disc ignore these numbers for now because all these are is preset distances that the tooth will bend I'm using a number eight for this particular saw it's got nothing to do with the number of teeth it's only to do with the amount of set so I set the plunger or the hammer against the tooth and I push squeeze this and that bends that tooth I skip a tooth so now I still have a pinnacle tooth where I've got a bevel on both sides and I can see that bevel I squeeze until the hammer stops and I skip a tooth and squeeze until the hammer tops and I go all along the saw from one end to the other skipping every other tooth checking that I am on indeed on the right type of tooth in this case because it is a cross cut saw not a rip cut saw it has a bevel on both sides of every tooth that I'm setting and I can see that bevel so I know I'm pressing against the right tooth now when I've gone all the way to the other end I turn the saw around because I can only use the saw set in one way and that is to always be pushing the tooth away from me so I'm going to turn the saw around when I get to the other end and then set the teeth that are leaning away from me from the opposite direction We'll flip it around now, we've gone all the way along. Doesn't matter which end you start from. You remember the first tooth was the one that was uh, bent from this direction towards me. So now I'm going to the second tooth and again I can see the double bevel on either side of the pinnacle point. So now I set the set right onto that tooth on the center of the tooth. The center of the point determines where I place the saw set. And now I use the plunger again to push the teeth, the alternate teeth in the opposite direction. So on a crosscut saw it's important that you understand that you're pushing the, the, the teeth out so that the pinnacle point is on that outer edge because when you start to use the saw, if you've done it the opposite way, the interior corners will be cutting into the wood and the outside won't so it will just tear and rip and you won't be able to get the saw into the wood very different than a rip cut saw all the way down this side like this and you'll start to feel these these um, teeth you can definitely feel these pinnacle points on the outside edge so you got these super sharp corners on the outside edge and that really is the simplicity of saw setting using a saw set like this one there are several different types um, and you completed saw setting so now your saw is ready for use mm -hmm.